Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're starting a new Let's Talk Lore series as we'll be looking at Sun Quan's heir, or rather the series of events that help determine Sun Quan's heir in this five-part series titled Sun Quan's Messy Inheritance. And in our first episode, titled Sun Quan's Seven Sons, we'll first introduce all seven of Sun Quan's sons to see who were eligible to inherit in the first place. Now, of all the Three Kingdom Emperors, Sun Quan lived the longest, as he was born in the year 182 and lived until 252 when he passed away due to natural causes at the age of 71. But despite his long life and his early rise to power after his brother Sun Ce's assassination in the year 200 when he was just 18 years old, Sun Quan did not have his first child until the year 209, when he was already 27. While this would be perfectly acceptable today, back during the Three Kingdoms period, that age was considered quite old to become a first-time father, as most men married when they were 16 to 20 years old and became fathers not long after. And Sun Quan was also not single, as he married early with his mother, Lady Wu, setting him up with Lady Xie while he was still a teenager, when Sun Quan first became mayor at the age of just 15, as at that time, his brother Sun Ce needed him to grow up fast to help the clan control the newly gained territories in the south. As Sun Quan's main wife, Lady Xie, came from a respectable gentry clan family, as the Xie clan were notable in their home commandery of Kuaiji in the south, and her father, Xie Jiong, had been an imperial court advisor who had retired from politics after the outbreak of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. And from historical records, Sun Quan loved Lady Xie, as the couple got along great until Sun Quan was thrusted to lead the clan after his brother's assassination. As you see, with Sun Ce's death, resistance against the Sun clan's rule grew in the south, and in order to solidify his brother's conquered territory, Sun Quan had to resort to a variety of means, including political marriage, as his mother, Lady Wu, would set him up this time with Lady Xu, who was actually related to Sun Quan, as they now needed support from the influential Xu gentry clan of the Wu commandery. Now, even though concubines were allowed in China, the status of the concubine was beneath that of the main wife, and there can only be one main wife. So for political marriage to work, Lady Xu had to become that main wife. Therefore, Lady Xie was pushed aside by Sun Quan and demoted to become a concubine to make room for Lady Xu. Lady Xie naturally became depressed after this, as her relationship with Sun Quan would fracture and ultimately, she would die not long after due to this depression. And Sun Quan's now second wife, Lady Xu, would become the main reason why Sun Quan did not have a child until the year 209, as Sun Quan and Lady Xu were not only related, but also shared no love for each other. The only reason that the two were put together was because Lady Xu's father, Xu Kun, was vitally important to the Sun clan at this time as he was in charge of the attack on Lujiang, where the local administrator, Li Shu, who was originally appointed by Sun Ce, had now declared independence after Sun Ce's death. In addition, the Xu clan and the Sun clan, both hailing from the Wu commandery, shared many bonds. Xu Kun's mother was Sun Jian's sister, as Sun Jian and Xu Kun's father, Xu Zhen, were good friends, and this relationship would make Xu Kun, Sun Jian's nephew, and Sun Quan's cousin, despite their rather large age difference. Not only were they related by blood, Xu Kun also resigned from a local government post in 190 to join Sun Jian's army against Dong Zhuo, which makes him one of the more veteran officers under Sun Jian, comparable to the likes of Zhu Zhi, Cheng Pu, and Han Dang. He also joined forces with Sun Ce prior to Sun Ce's departure from Yuan Shu, as Xu Kun would become a great aide in Sun Ce's conquest of the south. 
And the only reason we don't hear more about Xu Kun in the history books is because he would die before the more famous Battle of Chibi, as he ended up taking a straight arrow in one of Sun Quan's earlier conquests against Huang Zu. But we can see his importance as during this time, when the Sun clan's reign was the weakest in the south, they felt it was necessary to farther bolster the relationship with the Xu clan through a marriage to Lady Xu, who was technically Sun Quan's niece or first cousin once removed. And not only were they related, Lady Xu was also married before to Lu Shang, who was the grandson of Lu Kang, who had been the administrator of Lu Jiang that Sun Ce had first besieged under Yuan Shu, and the cousin of Lu Xun. But Lu Shang would die at a young age, leaving Lady Xu behind as a widow. So by all accounts, Sun Quan should not be marrying her, as while well, men can have multiple marriages and concubines, widow and second marriages for women in ancient China were looked down upon, for they were seen as damaged goods. So Sun Quan definitely married down here, as this became purely a political marriage meant to strengthen the Sun clan's position in a desperate time, which goes to show you the position Sun Quan was put in after his brother's sudden death. Regardless, because of this unhappy marriage, Sun Quan would not have his first child until he got what is assumed to be a lowly maid pregnant in the year 209 as his firstborn son, Sun Deng's mother, was deemed not only unsuitable to raise Sun Deng, but also deemed unsuitable to even become Sun Quan's concubine, as Sun Deng would grow up knowing Lady Xu as his mother. However, because of Xu Kun's death in the early 200s and Sun Quan's distaste for her, Lady Xu would ultimately be divorced by Sun Quan in the year 212, as Sun Quan would leave his family behind when he first moved to Jianye to establish his new capital there. Lady Xu would continue to live in Jingkou, where she would frequently see and tend to Sun Deng as their stepmother and son bond would continue despite the divorce. Now, as soon as Sun Quan got to Jianye, he would get another low-born pregnant with his second son, Sun Lu who would be born in the year 213, and it would not be until the year 224 that Sun Quan would finally have a son with one of his own concubines, as he would get his third son Sun He with Lady Wang. And by this time, Sun Quan was already 43 years old, but he would go on to have four more sons in Sun Ba, Sun Fen, Sun Xiu, and Sun Liang, with the last son Sun Liang being born in the year 243, when Sun Quan was 62. And not only was Sun Liang born when Sun Quan was ready in his 60s, Sun Liang's mother, Pan Shu, was once again not Sun Quan's concubine at the time, as she was just a maid in charge of weaving clothes inside the palace, who due to her outstanding beauty was spotted by Emperor Sun Quan by accident before impregnating her. Furthermore, the only reason she was weaving clothes in the palace in the first place was because her father had been a minor local official who had been executed for a crime, and thus she and her older sister were sentenced to hard labor inside the palace. Now, she did not get forgotten in history, like Sun Deng and Sun Lu's mothers, largely because Sun Liang would eventually become the second emperor of Wu, as Sun Quan would also become extremely infatuated with Pan Shu's beauty in his late age and make her one of his concubines. And indirectly, he became extremely fond of Sun Liang, despite his young age, which is a topic that we'll get to at the end of our series. But for the time being, we have introduced all seven of Sun Quan's sons, and when we come back tomorrow, we'll start with his eldest in Sun Deng, who would become the first crown prince for the kingdom of Wu at its founding. And all things considered, he was probably Sun Quan's most capable son and the most fitting heir. So hopefully you have enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help out the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!